Up next, I wanted to show you guys some cool kind of project cars and kit cars I found, as well as neat aftermarket modifications that are offered on the aftermarket currently, right now, as of me recording. And I wanted to start with the, in my opinion, the most interesting kit cars, specifically SLC kit cars, which from where I'm sitting, sound like an amazing deal. I mean, think about it. If you want to become, you know, a track driver, but you don't want to use a road car, and you want something as capable as a race car, but you don't have the budget, the SLC kit car seems to be, you know, a great option. They're super light. You can, if you don't feel like building it yourself, you can take it to a builder. You can use pretty much any engine you want. People have used Ford V8s, um, Lamborghini 5 liter V10s, LS's, all of the obvious engines. I think someone, there's, I think someone somewhere even put a rotary in one once, which I think is super cool actually. It, it's mid engine the transmission options are basically infinite, and you get supercar style with GT1 style performance for a bargain price. And obviously, obviously the customizability is insane. I don't know, I just think it's worth thinking about. Like, I've talked about this engine in the past, about being one of my favorite engines, is that, you know, imagine having a mid-engine, super light, supercar race car with an Audi five-cylinder turbo engine out of an Audi RS3. Just put, like, a slightly bigger turbo on it, have it push out 500 wheel horsepower, and you've got a fantastic track toy that sounds amazing. And I don't think you'd really have to worry about it fitting either because it's not that big compared to like the five liter V10 because it's a 2.5 liter five cylinder. Um, and people have squeezed the 5.2 liter V10 from the Gallardo and Huracan into these cars. So I'm sure it's doable. People have squeezed the S85 V10 out of the M5 into these cars too. Um, but that's not the BMW engine I would use. I would use, if I'm going to use a BMW engine, I don't think it would be very reliable, but I would use the S70 B56 out of the BMW 850 CSI. I, I'm pretty sure that's the trim level. And build it up, stroke it, build it, and basically make it a budget version of the S70 slash 2 slash 3 in the McLaren F1. Because I can't afford a McLaren F1 or their engines, which are like a quarter million dollars each, I'm pretty sure. At least. I don't know what they are now. It could be more. But it's probably a great track car. I think it's something to look into for you guys. If you think it'd be cool for me to do something like that for content, and do like some lap times and track stuff let me know because while my e46 m3 is cool i don't know if it's as bulletproof enough for the track as it would be for like a kit car or something like this obviously the build quality won't be the same it'll there'll be some rattling and things like that but i think it'll be better suited but speaking of budget gt1 cars check out probably the coolest replica car i've ever seen on youtube this guy in south africa built a an amazing mclaren f1 lm replica probably the best replica build i've ever seen and i think i, I just said that adhd moment but i'm i'm not kidding it's like a fantastic one-to-one -one replica i don't know what engine he has in it obviously not the the original s70 but the next best thing I would say if the guy who built that car is watching, contact Fletcher Made Horsepower and see how much it would cost to build a race engine out of an S70 and see if they can't build an engine for you so that it sounds good, get an exhaust made. Cause oh my god, I don't I would be surprised if there's emissions regulations in South Africa. No, actually there isn't. I know for a fact there isn't. Because when I lived there, my father had a Lexus IS250 that he supercharged, took the cats off and it was it was neat <laughs> it was neat it was a pretty car it was that nice metallic gold that would be my recommendation to him because oh man a car of you know a, a project car that is the result of that much labor and love i would love to see it have the ultimate bmw v12 engine that you can get as a normal person i i 100 believe his car deserves that because it just looks so good on a more kind of niche note, because I've looked into this myself for my own personal reason. Did you know that you can swap the gauge clusters of Lamborghini Huracans? Like, so if you're in the market for a Huracan, but you would like to have the cool Corsa, I believe, gauge cluster of the Performante or the Evo or the STO, but you'd like to only get like a 580-2 or a 610-4, you're in luck. 
I didn't know this, but apparently you can put in those gauge clusters into standard Huracons, saving you probably a couple hundred thousand dollars. As far as I understand it, if you if you put the Performante gauge cluster into like a 610-4, everything will work fine. You'll get the cool tack and everything like that. The only thing that won't work is you'll get an error for the ALA system not working because obviously the aerodynamics are not going to work. And my best guess is if you get the gauge cluster out of an Evo all-wheel drive model, um, you might get an error for the rear wheel steering not working is my best guess. I don't know 100% sure for a fact if that's the case, but, but that is my assumption because I am assuming that is something you can get a code for in the normal Evo. So I would be surprised if you couldn't get a code if you then put the cluster. I'm sure that you would get an error. Who cares? It would look super cool. And I, I, I'm pretty sure this goes, the same goes for the Aventador. So if you want to get an LP700-4, but you want the SVJ cluster or the S or the SV, um, I, I'm pretty sure that's possible too. Granted, I did this research already. Converting an LP700-4 to be an SV would be so expensive, you might as well buy an SV. But if you just want the cluster of like a Huracan Evo or something like that and you're 610, and then you just put an aftermarket body kit on it, that is probably actually more economical. Now, here's something interesting. Body kits for the Huracan. There's lots of options. Vorsteiner makes awesome stuff, Duke Dynamics. Um, all kinds of companies make cool kits. I've decided which kit I really want, but if I wanted a wide body kit, it's actually pretty hard. It's I, I'm the problem is is that you would want it to be functional and to be aerodynamically, you know, viable and practical, functional. Like I just said, redundant words. I love the look of the Liberty Walk Silhouette GT kit for the Huracan. Because it reminds me of the Veneno. It's like a baby V10 Veneno. And that's obviously very cool. Um, but I don't know how functional it is in terms of aerodynamics. I don't know if it would actually help the car that much. Whereas P1 Composites has what's called their HTO kit. Which is, I, I'm assuming, a reference to the STO. But it's actually based off of the Huracan Super Trofeo Evo body kit. Not the Evo 2, but the Evo body kit. And it looks like a good one-to-one -one replica. It's carbon fiber, made for street cars, and it looks very, very good. I haven't seen anyone actually buy it yet. I've only seen footage of it on their YouTube channel. So I don't know of anyone that's actually purchased it yet. But this particular kit looks good so far. So I am hoping it is legit because it's very expensive. So I hope no one's gonna get scammed because that's kind of a problem these days because obviously people want their car to look like a GT3 race car. And you could very easily take advantage of those people.